Welcome to B-Dubs DM21, I'm B-Dubs and this is a New World Build Concepts video. The build you are about to see is purely conceptual and theory crafted based on information gathered from the closed and open betas. These have not been tested and all skills, passives and other details are subject to change as we head into launch. This build guide is purely to convey the concept of the extremely robust custom class system New World introduces and to hopefully provide you some direction when you make the journey to a turnum. Today, we build the Patriot, a mid-ranged DPS class looking to take part in a revolutionary war reenactment built for PvP and PvE, originally conceptualized by Cutie Patootie. Alright guys, so for this build, we're going to be doing something really fun and something a touch unexpected. We named this one the Patriot, uh, not necessarily because it was inspired by the character played by Mel Gibson in The Patriot, but yeah, it kind of was. Let's go ahead and get into the weapons we'll be looking at. This is a DPS class with a lot of CC potential. We'll be wearing light armor and we'll be mainly focusing on dexterity with some points into constitution around level 25. You want to make sure you have over 100 dexterity and 50 constitution. Why the 50 constitution? I see very few people actually ask this or uh, actually, you know, advise this. I do. And the reason why is because you get a 20% bonus to all heals from consumables. So if you're playing PvP, which you should, uh, getting that extra 20% healing from your consumables is a thumbs up from me. It's very helpful. Trying to stay alive in PvP is very important. So having at least 50 con is fundamental. Yes, even for low level PvP. So, we want to get to about 115 dexterity, 50 constitution, when we are around the level 25 area. That's a good place to be. That's a great place to PvP from. And let's get into the actual build itself. We have two weapons. We have the hatchet and we have the rifle. And if you've probably noticed here, we're taking quite a few things down the trapper line. But before we get to the skill by skill breakdown, let's sort of explain what it is this class is supposed to be doing. The idea behind this class is to be an assassin. You are an ambusher. You want to kill and you want to kill quickly. Your goal is to kill a single target as fast as possible. And there's a couple things that we need to do here and there's a couple things we need to bear in mind. Even though this is a rifle build, which does amazing chip damage at incredible ranges, okay? Even though this is a rifle build, get off my screen, freaking I need to delete that program. Anyways, <laughs> in order to do this, this is a mid-range build. We're going to be fairly close, not too far away when we engage a target. This is awesome if you're hiding in a bush or maybe there's somebody approaching your position and you're going to want to trap them. This is a very, very sneaky build. A lot of musket players don't use things like sticky bombs, and I'm honestly confused as to why not. It's amazing. Let's get into the build. The idea here is that we're going to open with a powder burn, which gives an awesome damage over time. It's great. Furthermore, it allows you to deal more damage on targets who are actively burning, and that is awesome. Next, we're going to do the stopping power. So first we burn them, then we knock them down. We shoot them and they fall on their back. At this point, we go into melee range. We're going to drop a sticky bomb on them, which actually gives a 15% slow. And if for whatever reason they're still alive, you switch over to your hatchet, turn on Berserk, and you go ham. And that's the concept for the build. Now, do you have to do everything in that order? Ideally, yeah, you would. That would give you the fastest kill. But this build does have some flexibility where if things go wrong, you have a few tools at your disposal to fight through and win out. So we're going to go through every single ability and every single passive that makes this build amazing. We're going to go ahead and first take a look at the hatchet. Here's the deal, guys. I, I was looking at this and normally I do take a few skills from the throwing tree on my hatchet builds. Normally I do. But in this particular case, we have a musket, a beautiful, beautiful gun that shoots little pebbles that hurts people. And it's amazing. And we like it. 
So because of that, I really didn't see any need to add any kind of range to this build in the hatchetry and we went 100% berserker. Yeah, because this tree is a touch broken. Now, I expect this tree to be nerfed one way or another come launch, but it will still be good. Okay, this is too popular a tree. They're going to they're going to have to go in surgically removing little bits of percentages here and there to try to balance this. And even when they do attempt to do that, I don't think that this build will be nerfed that significantly. So let's go ahead and break down the skills and see where we're at. So, for those who do not know, how do you not know, Berserk triggers a Berserk mode that increases all attack damage by 20% while active. Now, Berserk mode will be active for 12 seconds. This is a very lengthy amount of time, but you won't need all 12 seconds. You'll probably need about four. Anyways, let's continue. Uh, this, uh, this cooldown will not be triggered until the Berserk mode ends it's an 18 second cooldown so essentially you can go berserk once every 30 seconds awesome 20 percent damage increase we're happy next while you are berserk your movement speed will increase by 20 percent oh so now we're fast and happy next while berserk is active heals 10% every 4 seconds to a max of 30% health. The amount of health gained is increased by how long Berserk is active. Now, Berserk will stay active so long as you keep the hatchet out. So once you go Berserk, you really want to stay with your hatchet until at least the Berserk runs out. So you can get the full effect of your heal. If you switch weapons, you are no longer Berserk, your haste falls off, your damage bonus goes away. Make sure you stay in your hatchet mode while Berserk is activated or you will lose these perks. The next one, Berserking Purge. Triggering Berserk removes all crowd control effects. So this is really, really good. If something goes wrong and you are somehow trapped or I showered or something happened to you, you know you can switch to your hatchet, pop Berserk, and now you are free of that stun that um, you are free of the stun, you're free of the slow, you're free of the root. You can then pursue your target with that additional speed and have at it, Hoss. Next up. We've got un uninterruptible Berserk. Uninterruptible. That sounds good to me. That's right. While in Berserk, your attacks are uninterruptible during Berserk and you can't be staggered. Now, this is awesome. Because what if I told you, you cannot die? That's right, you cannot die. This is the next big thing. Now, this isn't part of the Berserk tree. You don't have to take Berserk to get Defy Death. But, you know, <laughs> who doesn't want to take Berserk? It's amazing. All right, let's take a look at this. When you uh, receive lethal damage, you avoid death and your HP is reduced to 50. You then gain immortality for three seconds. This is on a 60 second cooldown. That is unbelievably short. What an unbelievably short cooldown for an invulnerability. Uh, so in this state, you cannot take damage. You cannot die. Yeah, it's awesome. Next up, we're going to have the sprint attack. Sprint attack is very handy as an opener. Essentially, what you're going to do is if for whatever reason the target is somehow moved away from you. Now, this happens, you know, different weapons have skills like burnout, right, or flesh. And they, they get away. Well, that's fine. You pop berserk. Now you get your haste and then you sprint attack. And this is a sprinting melee attack. So you leap forward and then you hit twice. The first hit will deal 115% and the second deals 130% weapon damage. You get a couple perks on that uh, if the target's below 30% health, which <laughs> after you burn them, threw them on the ground and chucked a sticky bomb on them, they probably are going to be about 30% or lower. Yeah, they're not having a good day. But hey, if they are under 30% health, Feral Rush deals 20% more damage on top of the 20% damage you're already getting from Berserk. Oh, how nice. Next, if Feral Rush hits a target in the back, it causes Root, immobilizing the target for two seconds. This is one of the few Roots in the game, and this is a very, very good Root. When Rooted, you cannot do anything. You can attack whatever you're facing, but otherwise you cannot run. You cannot get away. That's right. 
if you put your back to a berserker, they're going to kill you. And you're not going to feel good about it. So, yeah, it's pretty good to be the berserker in this particular case. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have Raging Torrent. Now, this performs four fast attacks, each dealing 90% weapon damage. Pretty good. Hitting a target with Raging Torrent grants haste. Oh yeah, on top of the 20% haste that you already have, now you have 40% haste if you hit this. And hitting a target with Raging Torrent, any of the four hits will give this to you. You are now super fast. Okay, you're the Flash. That's awesome. 20% haste for six seconds. Take it. Next up, final blow. Press the light attack at the end of Raging Torrent to deal a final attack dealing 120% weapon damage. That's right, now we have five fast attacks. So the last one dealing 120% weapon damage. Now, before we get into all the passives, let's talk about your rotation. How are you gonna use these skills to maximize your damage? Oh, so glad you asked. Well, first we gotta take a look at two passives in particular. These two passives are very important because this tells us how to play. Now, when we have passives that tell us how to play, it makes the game very easy for us. So let's see what our passives do. After three successful light attacks against the same target, you gain Empower, granting a 30% damage increase for three seconds or until the next attack. Nice. So basically, light attack, light attack, light attack, and now my next attack, only my next attack, will get a 30% damage increase. Well, Heavy attacks do a lot of weapon damage, and we see here that Sprint Attack is two attacks, and we see that Raging Torrent is five attacks with this final perk. So, huh, what are we going to spend this on? Well, what do you know? We have a passive that tells us what to spend it on, and it's great. This one, after a successful heavy attack, gain in power granting a 30% damage increase for three seconds or after four attacks. Oh! Well, that sounds special. So basically, when we do our three light attacks, we then do a heavy attack. The three light attacks empower our heavy attack, and then our heavy attack will then empower the next four attacks that we do. Now, if only we had a skill that did four attacks. Oh, we do. It's called Raging Torrent. It's awesome. It does four attacks, plus an extra one at the end. That's right. So what we do with our rotation when we're in Berserk is three light attacks, followed by a heavy attack, followed by your Raging Torrent. If you do this, whatever it is you did it to, unless it's a dungeon boss, should be fairly deadened by now. It's pretty good. It's incredibly strong, and I like everything about this build. Uh, this is very strong. That's why we call this an Assassin class. This class is designed to murder you in the face hole until you're dead, and that's how it works. So again, three light attacks to empower your heavy attack. The heavy attack then empowers your Raging Torrent. You can then rinse and repeat, but instead of doing Raging Torrent, you have two options. You can do another heavy attack, followed by another heavy attack, followed by another heavy attack. Or you can do three light attacks, followed by a heavy attack. Three light attacks, followed by a heavy attack. I prefer the three light attacks followed by a heavy attack followed by three light attacks followed by a heavy attack over and over and over again because the heavy attack will empower the next four attacks and that means that the empower you get from your three light attacks on the second turn time you go around the merry-go-round right uh will then get a 30 percent damage increase on top of the 30 percent damage increase you got from the previous heavy attack it's very nice but it basically tells you exactly how you're supposed to hack your opponent into teeny tiny little pieces. This is a very, very high DPS rotation. It is one of the sickest DPS rotations in the game. This does so much damage. You're going to love it. And when you do it, and you do it right, you're going to squee. With joy, preferably. It's very good. In fact, it's so good, I would tell you to grab these two passives early, if you can. These two passives, get these fairly quickly. Uh, I would prioritize those two passives uh, before Berserking Purge. You can pretty much go down this tree, grab the other two skills, but honestly, these two passives are probably better than these other two skills. You need to get these two passives. They're very good, okay? Very good. We need to get them. They're important. 
All right, nice. Now, let's take a look at the other passives. We get if target is below 30% health, light and heavy attacks deal 20% more damage. What do you know? The build concept is designed to fight people who are very, very hurt once we go into Hatchet Berserk. Now we're getting an additional 20% more damage to anybody who's under 30. Wow. Next, against all odds, increase base damage by 10% for every enemy within 5 meters of the player. Now look, you know, you guys are rightfully saying, but B-dubs, I thought you said this is supposed to be a single target DPS build. Well, it is, but here's the thing. Increase base damage by 10% for every enemy within 5 meters of the player. Well, if there's one enemy within 5 meters of me, I get a 10% damage increase. Yeah, this is good. We continue. Fortifying strikes. Hey, remember that three light attack combo we were talking about? Well, now not only does it give you a 30% empower on your next heavy, right? But now it's going to grant you a fortify, increasing your damage absorption by 15%. So now not only are you crazy mass axe murderer, now you're actually just going to be much tougher in general to take down. Yeah, this is great. Next, Frenzied Purge. When hitting an enemy while your health is below 30%, you remove all bleed, burn, and poison damage over time effects from the player. This is excellent. Anytime you can remove the dots that someone has applied to you is good. Uh, dots are incredibly and deceptively powerful in this game. Dots do a lot of damage. We're going to talk about one such dot in this build that being powder burn but dots are incredibly strong and they will hurt you and they will kill you and most players when they have dots on them they don't even realize they have them they just try to run away thinking that they can get away but in reality they're already dead i've seen it a lot in pvp that people with who are just all dotted up thinking they can escape but instead they just fall to the floor wondering why they died because you had a dot on you. You need to be aware of your status effects. How many dots do you have on you? Are they hurting you? Yeah, they are. Dots will tick you dead. The dots in this game are very strong. They are deceptively strong. So we need to be aware of that. Here's the cool part. Under 30% health, you hit anybody, you cleanse them all. You get rid of the poisons, you get rid of the bleeds, you get rid of the burns. It's amazing. It's so good. Oh, it just makes me happy. And then finally, of course, we have to talk about Desperate Refresh. Now, this one's, you know, it's all right. Uh, it does reduce our cooldowns, which reducing our Berserk cooldown is nice in general. But all cooldowns are reduced by 2% when hitting an enemy with an attack while your HP is below 30%. Well, we have Defy Death. So this shouldn't be too hard to get to because we don't care if we take damage. We really just don't care if we take damage. We're happy to take damage. Okay, we are. We are. Uh, the truth is, is that when you are in Berserker mode, you literally do not care about taking damage. You can take damage all day. You have Defy Death, you have heals, you have potions, right? Yeah, pack potions, okay? You just want this guy dead. And you have so many tools at your disposal to get the guy dead. So use them. And don't worry about how much damage you're going to take. Okay? It's going to be great. Awesome. That's the hatchet side of this tree. I love this. Now on to the musket side of this tree. Now I will admit, and I'll tell you right now, this side is not as sexy as the hatchet side. Hatchet does need some retooling and needs some nerfs. And hopefully this video is evidence of said need. But... That being said, let's carry on and let's take a look at the musket build. This thing is great and I like this thing so much. I am surprised, actually shocked, that I don't see more players running skills from the trapper side of the tree. Are you guys insane? This thing is wild uh, and does a lot of really cool things. Now, I understand you're playing musket and you think, oh, I need to play at range, significant range. No, no, no. We're going to play at medium range. We're going to play a medium range because the truth is, is that we're strongest when we're closer to the enemy. That's when we have Berserk. That's when we go wild. Okay? Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to open with Powder Burn. Now here's the cool thing about the shots you might not know. You can load the powder 
long before you ever go into to a fight. Once the powder is loaded, it's in your gun. So you can load the powder and run off into the field and do whatever. Your very first shot will be a powder burn. And if you waited, you know, long enough to shoot that shot, then your next powder burn will be immediately available. You can literally just slot it again. So if you miss your first shot, don't worry, slot it again, and then shoot again. It's awesome. It works great. Next up. Well, hold on. This is a 110% weapon damage shot that causes a burn status effect that deals 20% weapon damage per second over 9 seconds. Yeah, you didn't hear me stutter. That's 20% weapon damage per second for 9 seconds. That's 180% weapon damage. That's why I'm telling you that damage over time is sneaky and incredibly powerful. If you have a dot ticking on you for 180% uh, weapon damage over the 9 seconds, you might not realize it as your health ticks down slowly and slowly and slowly. And this is painful. It is a terrible way to go. So this weapon, with the two effects combined, base, right out of the box. Yeah. It's doing 310% weapon damage. <laughs> it's disgusting. 290% weapon damage. I can't do math sometimes. 280. 300% weapon damage? 300%. Look, I math bad, okay? You math right for me, okay? Now let's move on. Backdraft. The standard musket shot deals 12% additional damage while target is on fire. So not only did you put on this huge amount of dot, but now any shot you hit thereafter will do 12% additional damage. Very nice. I like it. Next one. Chronic Trauma. Yeah, this one's great. If Powder Burn is a headshot, extend the burn duration to 13 seconds. Oh. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. That's 260% dot. That's a 260% weapon damage uh, over 13 seconds. That's 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 really nice. Uh, that's really strong. Honestly, that's a very strong burn. If you get hit by this thing by a fully empowered powdered burn, man, dude, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. If you get hit by this thing, you will die. It hurts. It hurts. Then we're going to follow that bad boy up. Remember, we're in medium range. Like, you, sh you really hopefully are not missing these. We're in medium range. Here's the next one. Stopping power. Oh, this one's fun. Overload the musket with gunpowder, causing the next shot to deal 120% weapon damage, staggering the target and knocking them back 3 meters. This does not stack or combine with other overloaded shots. So what does this mean? It means that, hey, you know, if I have a powder burn in my in my gun, I can't then put a stopping power on my gun. Right? Right. So the idea is, is that I put in the powder, powder burn, shoot it. Guy's on fire. Now I load up my stopping power, shoot it. Dude's on the floor. Guy goes flying back three meters. It's a very visceral shot. Sure to surprise anybody who gets hit by this thing. It is disgusting. Decent damage on this thing too. Throwing them to the floor. Now targets hit with stopping power are now exhausted, which reduces their stamina regeneration speed by 10% for 8 seconds. This keeps them from running away. If you have low stamina and you're unable to regenerate it, you have less dodge rolls. This is a good thing for us. We need that. And then here's the next one. Targets hit by stopping power are slowed by 10% for 8 seconds. And that's where we get them. They're on fire. They just got knocked across the room. Now they're slowed and they're exhausted. They're going to try to dodge blowing away their stamina but that's when you come running up like the madman you are with sticky bomb oh yes a bomb that can be thrown a short range and sticks to anything it makes contact with now ideally you want to put this on the bad guy yeah. 
Detonation will occur 3 seconds after impact, and this deals 175% weapon damage to all targets within 3 meters. Pretty good. Now here's the cool part. This is what makes it really, really good. Sticky Bomb grants the player 40 stamina when it deals damage with an explosion. That's not the good part. This is the good part. Sticky Slow. Direct hits with the Sticky Bomb cause the target to be slowed by 15% for five seconds so you already gave them the 10 percent slow and now you're giving them a 15 percent slow for a total of 25 percent slow while the sticky bomb is on them it is at this point after using the sticky bomb you switch to your hatchet and you go nuts it's amazing that's how this build works it's, <laughs> it's great now let's break down the passives and let's see how we can make this even better so we'll go ahead and start with the sharpshooter tree and honestly, there was only a few here that we needed. We're not trying to shoot at range. Can you still shoot at range without these perks? Yeah. Can you still hit people without these perks at range? Yeah, you can. You can. You can still do all those things. Okay. Um, but what we're doing is we're taking a few passives that will help us out with the medium range game that we are trying to set up here. So here's the first one called shot. It increases musket damage by 5% if aimed down sight for more than three seconds. Now I'm sure there'll be many opportunities where you have your powder burn sitting chambered ready to rock and you want to make sure you hit this because if you hit this, oh man, the damage that ensues is insane. You must hit this. And if you can get a 5% damage bonus because you waited the three seconds to make sure you hit the shot even better next we get on successful headshot you grant empower increasing all musket shot damage by 10 percent for five seconds well since we're taking the three seconds to aim to make sure we hit this target we better get a headshot because now we get empower we're going to get the empower on our stopping power so that's really good now yeah yeah, 10%. You got five seconds to make your next shots, so make sure you make this one count. Next, Ballistic Advantage. Honestly, this one I almost hesitated not to get, but I decided to get it anyway, because there will be times in various PvP scenarios where you have a group of folk running up ahead and you want to get some pot shots. You know, they're very far away. You're not quite ready to go through your full rotation yet, and you want to do some chip damage as they run up to you. Hey, have at it, Hoss. And here's the thing, if they're further than 50 meters away, you don't lose any damage. You don't even have to worry about it. You can snipe them from across the world for all you care, all right? Just so long as you get those hits in you don't have to worry about damage fall off and i think this is just one concern that we can put away it's no longer lingering in the back of our head so this is pretty good we like this one next one the called shot resupply standard attack headshots reduce all musket ability cooldowns by 10 percent this is good this is really good so it's this is all musket ability cooldowns that includes your sticky bombs and everything else right we like this. This is good because if things get messed up and maybe we missed a shot, something's gone wrong, at least then our headshots will reduce our cooldowns, enabling us to make another attempt at the powder burn or or the stopping power or or the sticky bomb. And that's good. We, we want this. This is good. Anything that gives us more opportunities to land our full combo, the better we feel on the whole. Next, coming up, we have weakened defense. This one I love. This one I love a lot. Uh, because uh, blocking targets don't really expect anyone at ranged to break their shield block. And when you're shooting somebody at range, and maybe you're in a group situation where you got someone who's actually fighting a guy with a shield, you can break his guard very easily. So what this does is that it increases the stamina damage to blocking targets, blocking enemies, using shields by 50. So this blocks the shield, this breaks the shield. But here's the deal, it works for everybody, don't worry and you will deal 10% of armor penetration to targets that aren't blocking with a shield. So this helps you against all targets. Anything that increases my damage makes me happy. The next one, Empowering Weakness. Uh, hitting a target with an active debuff triggers Empower, increasing player's damage to be increased. <laughs> It increases your damage by 5% for 5 seconds, guys. All right, that's what it does. Uh, so whenever you uh, hit a target with an active debuff, well, what do you know? We have an active debuff. It's called Powder Burn, and it's amazing. So this will now increase any subsequent hit by 5% uh, when we actually follow it through with another rifle attack. Really good. I like Empowers. Empowers are nice. Anything that makes us better 
is awesome. Next one, back it up. Walking or strafing movement speed is increased by 10% when an enemy is within 8 meters of the player. This is pretty good. This enables uh, the backups. If you need to, like, say, say you're you're loading up your stopping power and someone's coming at you, you you can backpedal that reload, that load up, and then quickly aim the stopping power, get that center mass shot, so you get the guarantee knockback, and then follow it up with your sticky bomb hatchet kill. It's awesome. So anything that can help you get a little faster of a backpedal, nice. I like this a lot. This is very helpful. Next one, hustle. After a dodge, gain haste, increasing movement speed by 10% for three seconds. A very, very good passive. So once we hit that stopping power, we're going to dodge towards our target, giving us the haste so we can drop the sticky bomb on them. This is very good. I like it. Here's the next one, tactical reload. Yeah, dodging reloads the musket. And this can only happen once every six seconds. So you get that stopping power, dodge towards the target, and let's say he gets away, no biggie, you have another shot ready to rock. Really cool. I like this. And then finally, our ultimate passive, it's called Lethal Combo. Increase musket damage by 20% against targets affected by trapper tree status effects. So that's your stopping power. Essentially, this will increase your sticky bomb damage by 20%. Sticky bomb is nasty and gnarly already. So we're very happy with the sticky bomb. It's going to do even more damage. It puts a slow on the target, makes them blow up, and everybody has a good day. Well, except for the poor sap who got, well, sapped. In any case, guys, this is the Patriot. Let me know what you guys think about the build in the comments down below. Is it good? Would you use it? Do you have any suggestions? Let me know. In the meantime, guys, stay safe out there. Keep the faith and game on. See you guys next time.